Hello, welcome to this video. Uh, today we're gonna be demonstrating some brand new stencils that Multilayer Stencils has come up with. And they are called HD stencils. And uh, these stencils are really incredible and they're very useful for people, you know, that don't have a lot of time. And if you're, and if you're like most of us that don't have a lot of patience when painting, then uh, this is also good for that because it enables you to to do paintings that uh, that don't take long to do, but at the same time uh, allow you for free cre creativity and uh, you know you can do it faster than uh, freehand in everything. They are also they are also good for people who sell their work. Uh, if you have customers, uh, you can also uh, be able to, you will be able to sell more work uh, faster and easier. You know, it will make your life easier. You, your workload is going to be uh, less. And today, uh, I'm going to attempt painting a scenery, a military scenery using the armor vehicles. And this is a small stencil. Uh, and in front of the armor vehicles, I'm gonna put this. Uh, I'm gonna paint these soldiers, kind of like walking uh, from from the battlefield, you know, coming back from the battlefield, kind of uh, kind of look. And uh, we'll find out how it comes out. Uh, let's get started. So let's begin by by painting the soldiers. Um, these stencils you can paint each individual subject by itself or or uh, you can combine multiple designs in different sizes like I am doing here uh, to create uh, more perspective and also a little bit more uh, realism in your scenery and another thing that uh, to keep in mind whenever you are using mul multiple stencils is to start from the foreground and work your way back towards the towards the background uh, that way you will save a lot of you know work you can still work from the background to the foreground but it requires more work so you know it's better to uh, work smart than to work hard so I will position the, the first stencil wherever I, uh, I want to place it on this uh, plate. And I'm going to use magnets to hold the stencil down. Um, if you want to tape it, I've, I've seen that uh, clear tape like this one uh, will stick better to the stencil. Uh, just make sure not to uh, pull the stencil or try to stretch it because uh, it will lose its shape. And uh, once you have your stencil in place, uh, how you like it, we'll just establish where the soldiers are. And the color I'm using is black, straight black. We're going to add more color later, but for now I'll start with black. And I'm using illustration colors from Createx. Uh, remember, with these stencils, you, you should only use water-based paints. All stencils also have positioning marks. I'm not going to be using this, these marks today. Um, that's why I'm holding the stencil in place uh, but if you need to work back and forth it, it will be a good idea to spray the positioning marks because then uh, it will be easier to reposition the stencil on the excess than than trying to position it on the uh, on the subject itself and I'm checking how the the design is coming out before I move the stencil because then it will be a nightmare to uh, try to put it back 
in the same place. It's possible, but it takes time. And the smaller the subject, the harder it is. And let's see what we got here. So that's the first layer. And it really looks really nice. So Second layer will be uh, these trucks, but there is a trick here, and uh, right now I'm trying to look for where the, hor uh, the horizon will be, and I'm thinking I'm, I'm putting a low horizon, maybe right here, so I can rest the trucks there. But there is a problem that uh, we, it's not a problem, it's natural, but it's natural that it will happen. But as you can see, the trucks will overlap these two soldiers here. So there are multiple things we can do. And um, one thing we can do is uh, use masking tape here and we can cover these these soldiers and uh, we can just spray using this other layer. Another thing we can use is liquid mask uh, and it will be easier to you know kind of like brush the liquid mask around the soldier and since there's a lot of detail it, a little bit a little bit that you miss is, is not going to be a big problem. Um, this time I will use the tape mask and cut it out with a razor blade and then we'll go back to, to this layer and continue painting. So now I have gone ahead and I've used clear mask on these two soldiers. And another thing that will help you is to keep the stencil in place, whatever you you would like to to uh, place it, because that way you see where the subjects intersect, and then you only have to tape those areas. You don't have to to completely go around and cut the whole uh, the whole uh, subject. So now I will spray these trucks so we can keep going and moving ahead. Just because it helps me, I will uh, hold down this side too. And uh, again, using illustration black, I will spray around here, around the whole stencil. And again, without moving the stencil, we need to check, see what we got. And uh, it's looking really good. I see that I need to darken some areas. And, uh, and that is subjective. It's uh, however you like. And uh, this stencil also has some positioning marks. Again, I'm not using them. But whenever you're doing something more complicated, there will be they will definitely be helpful. OK, 
Okay, I think this is ready. And I will remove the masking on the soldiers now. And um, I'll be really careful. And I'll be really careful with the X-Acto knife to lift the, the mask so I don't scratch the paint. So I've gone ahead and removed the masking tape. And um, here we have the black and white results. And now what I want to do is add the color to the soldiers. Uh, they, this will be helpful because it will uh, it will separate it will give it more separation between subjects. Right now everything is black and white. Uh, it seems to blend together over here, and I want uh, more separation. And uh, I've mixed a kind of a green brown uh, for the uniforms, and. Um, I'll spray it on the on the soldiers and see how it's looking. And remember uh, to use transparent colors uh, as they will give you, as they will allow you to put color on the subject without uh, without uh, covering whatever texture is down there. And. I think I like that color. So I will add color to all the soldiers. Now that I have some color down on the soldiers, I move ahead and put some color on the trucks uh, just to have a, a small separation of color. Uh, I've made the color for the trucks a slightly, slight, slightly more green. And uh, let's see, let's see how it looks. So, I see the truck right here. I would like to have uh, a soldier here. Um, and perhaps that's one of the really nice things about these stencils. And that is that if you have enough stencils, you can, since every stencil has a lot of uh, different subjects, uh, more than likely you're gonna have something that works there. So I'm thinking on using one of these soldiers here uh, where the gunner goes. Uh, I'm not really sure how that, that is called, but I want to put a soldier there, maybe just like the head, so it looks like there is someone. Um, I haven't tried it, but let's see what happens. It's all about 
curiosity and see how much you can push it. Okay, so I have the stencil in place and uh, I'll try the idea and see. See what we can come up with. Working slow. It's not a lot that I want to do there, but it just adds a little bit to the picture. It makes it look like there is people in there. Any painting with more people looks better. Okay. Let's see how is that? Mm. I think that will work. Okay, um, now I will focus on working on the, on the environment. What I mean by that is I will do the ground here and I'll just add some texture uh, with any other stencils I, I could have used uh, to add sand or something like that, any other texture, but I just wanna make it simple and the main focus here, I want it to be on on these soldiers here on the front. If you were doing this sort of work for someone else, you know, you could, you could, it will be a good idea, I think, to title it like something like uh, coming back home or something, you know, something that gives a meaning. Uh, people seem to like, you know, customers seem to like uh, when when artwork has some meaning. I'm noticing my color is too green.
So here we have some of the ground. Um, now I will do the, the, the painting is looking a little bit uh, too dark, but it, that, that is because we have so much white. And um, to combat that, uh, I'll do some clouds. Maybe something kind of like a you know, like a rainy day or something kind of like a cloudy day. Uh, I'll mix a color with purple and black and we'll, and we'll use that to create some clouds. gone ahead and I have placed the stencil back uh, because I need to establish some of the darker areas I didn't think I was gonna need to but then I didn't tape if you notice I didn't tape anything so I prefer doing it like that because now I can just come back and reestablish uh, whatever all this detail was lost and um, I don't want to get all the detail back but uh, most of it uh, most of the darker areas, I want them back, so it's easier to see. Uh, but like the boots, I don't really care about the boots because I want to make it look as if you know there is some sort of uh, uh, ground that is covering the boots. So uh, replacing the stencil, it takes it takes a little bit of time, uh, but it is possible to do it. It just requires a little patience. And uh, I'll spray some more black. And I wanna be able to be checking so I can be lifting the stencil. One thing you gotta keep in mind, uh, let me show you really quick. Just take a look how much the darker colors have faded. And that is because uh, the paint underneath, I, I had spray white under it. So it seems as if the white tries to suck some of that uh, black that I put in on top. So that's why I need to reestablish the black areas. Of course, I also spray on top of it, uh, so those are two reasons why to reestablish. See how much vibrant that is coming now, the more contrast. Uh, the more contrast you have, the better it looks. And I don't care much about the trucks. Uh, I want to leave it like that uh, because it adds to the distance when you have uh, stuff on the back a little, a little bit more faded than anything on the foreground. And if you don't know what background and foreground is, uh, I'm sure you know about the background, but the foreground is the front, is whatever appears to be in front, whatever appears to be closer to you. Yeah, 
looking way better now. There we go. That is looking really good. Uh, if I wanted to extend, I could add more color to anything that, like the rifles, I can. I could make some sort of a purple, really dark color uh, to try to try to match the colors. Or else, you can work from reference pictures and work from those colors. Uh, I think I will just clear coat this this painting so all the contrast comes out and uh, call it uh, call it done so I will just leave you with the final picture once this is clear, clear coated and uh, I really enjoy that these stencils have a lot you know they're really generous they have a lot of details on on each one of them and as you can see with one stencil uh, if we wanted to we don't need to do everything that the stencil comes with we can just select some some areas of the stencil and and uh, make it work with that it all depends uh, whatever you are doing uh, and the other thing is it makes you feel accomplished once you complete something because in a uh, in a short amount of time you you can complete something you know that is very uh, satisfying to see and uh, I hope you guys like the video I hope you guys like the stencils uh, try them out I'm really sure you're gonna love them and until next time thank you for watching everyone bye bye